please welcome your host for tonight, WNYC's Leonard Lopate. And welcome. Tonight's featured guest was born and raised in South Korea. She learned to cook traditional Korean food with her family, but uh, didn't make it a career until she emigrated far from home, first moving to Canada and then coming here to New York City. And now she has more than 765,000 followers on her YouTube channel show and 86 million views for her recipe demonstration videos. She has a new cookbook that Jennifer mentioned called Mangchi's Real Korean Cuisine, Authentic Dishes for the Home Cook. Please help me welcome Mangji to the green space. I mentioned that you grew up in South Korea, but where in South Korea? South Korea. I was born in Imhil. Probably you guys never heard about this. But I was uh, raised in Yeosu. It's a harbor city, really southern, southern tip mm -hmm. of uh, Korea. And there's all the you know, seafood is so a lot of, a lot of seafood. Is, does Korea have regional differences the way so many other countries do? Is there certain cuisine that is specific to South Korea? Yeah. I mean, to South, South Korea? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Korea is a small country, but just like other countries, you know, all region by region, all different. You know, some, like a kimchi making, it's a oh, gelato style. In you know, the southern part, is, uh, we use a lot of fish sauce and, you know, kind of heavy, like a kimchi paste. But Seoul, Seoul is a little north. <laughs> so even only takes four hours by bus, but still, mm. you know, far north. And then Seoul kimchi is a kind of a clean, and then they don't use much, you know, fish sauce. Mm. When did your interest in cooking begin? Uh, it, would this be typical of a young woman in South Korea? No. My sisters don't like to cook. <laughs> they love to eat food. But uh, the, like a funny thing is that we always talk about this. My sisters, all of those girls told me, I'm the, I'm the oldest one. And oh, ever since you are just young, like they was, my siblings are younger than me. You all the time made something quickly. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, something like, for example, they still remember, like a Korean, we call this some kind of a snack, Indian bap, it's like a, uh, the cereal. So cereal, I used to make this for all my, I'm the, like the five children, oldest of the five children. So I need to feed these, uh, you know, these uh, people like with my snack. <laughs> so I made up and like with like a huge bowl and then some milk and then I add some cereal kind of, we call this Indian bap. You know, bap is rice, kind of dried crispy, rice and crispy. Indian? Because you, it, you thought it came from India? <laughs> no, just a funny name. Like a, <laughs> the song is Indian bap. Oh. And it's just like, you know, and then there's like a children's Children's, you know, food. Do people, are people more likely to eat fish than meat in Korea? Yeah. The reason I ask is last week, Mangchi took me to eat some meat steak at a Korean barbecue restaurant where she taught me how to eat like a local. And we have a video. Let's take a look. <laughs> Mangju, you suggested that we come to this place to talk about Korean food. Why here? This is a restaurant barbecue place is Jongno Sanghae. Jongno is a district name in Seoul. I really love this atmosphere. I feel like I'm sitting in Korea. This place is a specialty is a barbecue. Uh -huh. So I think the first you gotta decide beef or pork. Let's try beef. How about this? Marinated Korean, you know, bulgogi. Okay. okay. It's a Korean barbecue. It's a different from usual barbecue because we cook at the table. How important is barbecue to Korean cuisine? Is it what most people eat? No, like a very special food. Like company boss, okay, I'm going to pay for everybody. Let's go together. Like so 20 people, you know, bring them, you know? Well, I work in public radio. We don't have those special accounts. <laughs> Too expensive. Budget, yeah. <laughs> Yes, the marinated, the unmarinated beef. Okay. So we have different things that he put in front of each of us. So that's for you, that's for me, same. Yeah. So kind of a green onion, bean sprouts, and this is a spicy sauce. <laughs> and this is sesame oil. 
This is macaroni salad <laughs> with mayonnaise, eggs, and a mix together. This is kimchi. This is a uh, onion, sliced onion, kind pickle. of a pickle. Yes. I am 29 years old. How about you? I assume you are 30 years old. At least 30 years old. So you are 30 years old. So you are my elder. So you wanted beer. I will use both hands. So, that, so using both hands is a show of respect? Yeah. I'm a, how dare I can see your face. You know, I'm old, younger than you. It's so like they respect the elders. Like. So you turn away. Yeah. This is starting to show some heat. This is a samjang. It's a mixture of bean paste, Korean fermented bean paste and uh, so hot pepper paste. It's a kind of a dipping sauce. These are all dipping sauce. Okay, here salt. I add sesame oil. This mixture is so tasty. Whatever you do in a barbecue. How we are going to eat? We are going to make one pouch, then one bite. It should be one bite. Piece of meat, and then sesame oil. Put it here. Green onion salad, and then it is a samjang. Samjang, just a little bit. Just a little bit. This will make it really earthy taste. And then you just wrap it up. Yeah. Wrap it up. Okay, I wrap it up. Yeah. Make one pouch, and then eat it. Delicious. Mm. Mangchi, thank you so much for taking me here and giving me this lesson. Anytime, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Come back. Come back. <laughs> so, Bangshi, I, I wonder when I've eaten in Korean restaurants in the past and didn't make the little pouch, did uh, Koreans look over and say, oh, those vulgar Americans? You know? <laughs> because uh, this uh, pouch is uh, like we sometimes like too big, you know, so you need to think, you know, so I make one pouch. <laughs> Because I think that's the, like, when you cut it in half, kind of not pretty also, you know? <laughs> you know, not easy, you know, it's not knife. Your teeth are not knife. <laughs> and then, also, like, uh, when the meat and everything inside is a one bite, and the texture and flavor is uh, you can enjoy. I think that's the reason. Yeah. It's, it's a solution to, f uh, to food problems that we see all over the world. The taco, for example, yeah. uh, pretty much the same idea, and they're all sorts of Chinese dishes that use lettuce and other vegetables to you put food into, baking yeah. duck, for example. So yeah. I guess uh, we shouldn't be surprised that Koreans have something like that. But um, you, you made it clear that uh, uh, experiencing Korean cuisine is a lot more than just eating the food. If I were invited to your home for a meal, would I be expected to bring something, a bottle of wine, or a dessert? Not now. I've been living in you know foreign country like uh, non, uh, in America, Canada, more than ten years. So you can come just uh, you know alone, nothing. I don't need anything. But in Korea, Korea like uh, shows some respect, and then you can bring some like wine or you know some or sometimes when I was uh, uh, like uh, when I married and and when I went to the, my parents' in law house, and I used to buy some the you know beef beef is so expensive you in bring Korea. a piece of beef yeah so beef is uh, like expensive like you know you know 30 dollars 40 dollars and but korean money is a huge money at that time and then just the the butcher he's uh, wrapping wrapping this beef like in the uh, the, uh, the newspaper so mm -hmm. he wrap it up, and then I just go to my you know parents in law's house, <coughs> with some other like a big box of you know, apple or pear, and they love it. You know they love it. they love that they prefer meat, uh, meat <laughs> to any like some uh, because that's expensive. So what they do is like make a soup. So usually we bring there some brisket. You know so brisket is uh, really delicious. So when you make this Korean soup, you know uh, radish beef beef radish soup. Or you know, meal cook, you know, some uh, sea seaweed soup. So you need uh, like a big chunk of uh, some the cutting uh, the in the brisket, and this really boil, and then so tasty and kind of a little fat inside, and then out oh, tasty. So <laughs> all the share with uh, so many people, you know, twelve people of all family members. You know. But so they wouldn't cook it the way we we had it in the restaurant. They wouldn't have something. Uh, 
hibachi or something on the table and cook it there? Oh, yeah, no. You know, home cooking is that we don't do this. It's in the kitchen. In the kitchen, they cook and then bring to the room. Yeah. Now, I mentioned dessert. People don't bring dessert. Do people eat dessert? Uh, some people, maybe, you know, high-class people, mm. maybe, you know, who studied in you know, abroad, you know, so, oh, I need some cupcake, you know, something mm. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I never like a cupcake, you know. Yeah. I, I tried, I tried, you know, some the cupcake, the famous cupcake place, you know, so why not? I'm you know, living in America. And mm. Cupcake is a problem is that if I eat this, not full enough, I like to eat a lot. And then what about my like, cholesterol, you know, fat? So that's why, you know, I don't eat. As the host? As we the Koreans uh, eat dessert, uh, like uh, some piece of, you know, apple, some seasonal, seasonal mm -hmm. fruit. fruit. Yeah. Most Asian cuisines. Yeah. Um, as the host, would you be pouring drinks for guests the way that you did for me when we ate together? Pardon? <laughs> would you be pouring drinks the same way because you're the host? Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah always. When you are uh, older than me, I always be, you know, Show so, them my respect. Yeah. So there's certain things that Koreans do to show politeness that Americans just could not imagine doing. Yeah. If we were just having a typical meal tonight yeah. in Korea, what would we be eating? Oh, rice. <laughs> First thing I have to prepare is rice mm -hmm. and multigrain rice. It can be you can be fluffy white rice and and soup. Like a soup, you know, soup, it depends on, you like, you feel like some seafood soup and then like a squid soup. So tasty with the radish, you know, sliced radish and mixed with some little soy sauce, garlic, and lots of uh, the squid, chunks of squid, and then boil, boil, and then hot pepper flakes, green onion, onion, and tasty, so tasty. And with just, a, you, you have a rice and soup, kind of, you don't need many side dishes, but, you know, for family, as a housewife, you prepare more, some like a spinach side dish, or sometimes pancakes, tons of tons of pancakes. So Korean food is so diverse, so diverse, yeah. Of course, we'd have to have kimchi, because as we saw on the video, um, Koreans average 40 pounds of kimchi every year. That's a lot of kimchi. Yeah. They just put it on everything? Kimchi is a, they, uh, they make some, some special dish. Kimchi jjigae, kimchi stew, kimchi pancake, kimchi rice, and <laughs> also kimchi, kimchi soup. So, you know, they you don't get tired kimchi of it? dumpling. Never, never, <laughs> never. I travel like a foreign country more than like a one week. If I don't eat the kimchi, I really miss my kimchi. I cannot swallow other food, you know, so. <sighs> something, something. I need the kimchi, I need the kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't Chinese philosophy influenced Korean cooking, the, the, the way Koreans think about food? Is it the, the balance thing? You have to have the, the yeah. yin and the yang? Yeah, yin, yang, and also five elements, mm -hmm. and something like uh, all this uh, cosmos, this universe, uh, what is uh, made with this? All this uh, we are influenced uh, you know, the, from China. You know? So like uh, basically when you, uh, when you plan the uh, meal, you know, table, table setting, and then you just uh, diet, like uh, what, what kind of, I use some meat, and then I need some vegetable, I need some starch, I need some vitamin, you know. So kind of things, but it should be also color. Color is more colorful. I, I don't want to make the soybean sprout soup and soybean sprout rice, soybean sprout stuff, rice, stuff, soybean sprouts. So we just make a different, you know, ingredients, and then uh, everybody can enjoy. You've given yourself the name Mangchi. That's not your real name, is it? Yeah, you guys know why I am Mangchi? No? Okay. Mangchi is in Korean hammer. 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 <laughs> I used to play game, online game, a name called the City of Hero. The game company went to bankruptcy, you know, <laughs> unfortunately. So, like, um, uh, the... When, when I was playing the game, almost I was ad addicted to this game for three and a half years. <laughs> and then I was, uh, uh, the, one of the character name is I need to look really tough because uh, all the time it's just I, you know, like a you know, big sword or a hammer and then, you know, kill the old villains. So, <laughs> and then every, every, day, every day, like I work and come back home 
and then just wash, and then sit at my computer until late, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock a.m. Mm. Next morning I go, I know, this is an addiction, you know, but I love that, you know. So <laughs> anyway, one of the character names is Mangchi. And then around that time, uh, YouTube. It's just the YouTube, I studied this, and then they asked me what kind of account name, channel name. So at that time, I was playing Mangchi, you know, so, <laughs> okay, I never, I took, uh, took that seriously, this uh, YouTube stuff. Just the uh, okay, monkey. And then, just I made a video, and then right next day, a lot of people came. Wow, you know, they already made. They already made, just right next day, when I upload my video, oh, I followed your spicy squid, and it turned out so good. How about the kimchi? How about, the, you know, doenjang jjigae? You know, all kinds of uh, requests is coming. So. They made me keep working like this. So it's just eight years, eight years, yeah, so far. Yeah. These foods can develop rather pungent odors. How do you cook them uh, without upsetting your neighbors? Oh, I don't care about my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> It's America, it's all the people are just together, you know, living, all the immigrants, right? But. I have an exception. When I, uh, I came to 1990s, for the first time in my life, came to America. And I used to live in Columbia, Missouri at the time, the small town. And then the, the, I, at, I didn't know America like has an oriental store, Korean grocery store. I never learned this, so I thought that, wow. I gotta make the Korean doenjang, fermented bean paste. So I brought them my bean paste at, from Korea. Mm -hmm. So even my the big huge bag, yeah, he, in the huge bag and it's some fermented smelly, you know, some dried <laughs> fish plus, you know, bean, bean blocks. And then I came home and then just I made this. But later I found out I could buy fermented bean paste everywhere. You know, there is a uh, oriental store, you know. Um, is it just as good? Oh no, home, hmm. homemade one is much, much better. But still, I don't have to, you know, bring the old way. Problem is, I have to make, to get my good doenjang, doenjang bean, bean paste. I need to put the salt, salty water, and then later I need to boil the, you know, uh, the soy sauce. And then I just boil the soy sauce. You know, the, in Korea, when you boil soy sauce, the soy sauce is so stinky. Mm -hmm. But for me, like, it smells good, you know? <laughs> but actually, this smells, I know, they're so strong. And then somebody knock at the door. <laughs> and then my the tough manager lady, what's, all, what's the smell? It's the, it's the, oh. I was so embarrassed at the time, you know. And then I said I turn off. Ever since that time, oh my God, I'm not going to make a doenjang, you know. I'm so, you know, embarrassed. But I had to make a kukbo. So yeah, I came here and my readers, you know, eight years follow me, my recipe. These people are better than Korean housewives cooking skill. <laughs> their kimchi, oh my God, you guys should see their photo section, what they make. Kimchi is Awesome, awesome. Presentation is awesome. I mean, much, much better than any, you know, new, newbie Korean cook. <laughs> so she, anyway, so this, these people ask me how to make it. They now, time for them to learn real fermented food, you know, homemade food. So I had to include it to my cookbook. So I had to make this, and I know in my house I cannot boil this. So where I go, where I went, <laughs> in the park. <laughs> so you cook in the park. Huh? Yeah, today I brought there, you know, my stuff in the, like, so my cart, inside the cart, and then in, go to the Inudu Park, and then, like, a good early morning. Early, nobody's <laughs> sell, early morning go, and then boil. And then, even outside, a little smell. <laughs> even outside, all open. So I did so far two times I made. <laughs> two times, so, yeah. Well, you're about to do a demonstration here, and we'll take some questions from the audience, but just um, one more thing. What are your plans for the future? Do you think you'll ever open a restaurant? No. <laughs> more cookbooks? <laughs> restaurant is, uh, today, I made it for you guys. I just heard how many people are coming, and 110, 120. So, okay, I got to make 130 small pancakes. 
And then I'm not a restaurant chef. I don't have any of my assistant, right? So I'm the person who has to do all cool. So I started at 10, 10 a.m. and finished at 2, 2.25. And then even I didn't take a shower at the time. <laughs> and then I was dizzy. I felt dizzy. <laughs> and then I, was, I confirmed uh, I cannot open the you know, restaurant. <laughs> I cannot. Yeah. I will die. <laughs> Yeah. And, and now you've got me a little worried about the demonstration. <laughs> no, easy, easy, just a small amount. Well, I let's uh, get up and let them bring the, uh, all of the equipment over here okay. where, so you can do the demonstration. And uh, we will invite the audience to ask any questions you want because I'm sure that I missed a whole bunch of really interesting things. Hi. Hi. What's your opinion of Korean taco food trucks? Oh, love it. I love it. I love taco, by the way. Yeah. I went taco truck and kimchi taco, roiche taco. I went to Los Angeles. I tasted roiche. You know roiche? Kimchi taco is an original kimchi taco. But, and then really tasty. And I make that taco. Even yesterday, I made a fish taco. At home. Yeah. Do they make them in Korea, or is this American? I when I lived in Korea, taco not, not many people know about this, but these days a lot of people know. Yeah. And food is being passed around, so everybody will have a, a chance to to sample it. Um, another question. Go ahead. Hi, Manji. Hey. So, what do you eat when you're cooking? What am I eating? Yes, so I do a lot of house parties and I'm always eating kimchi fried rice mm -hmm. when I host like a big party because I cannot eat the food for the guests. So I'm curious, what do you eat when you're cooking? While I'm others? cooking? Yeah. I eat all the time. Okay, I chop it up, you know, some the, uh, the carrot. Always I eat some peas. You know, this is a benefit for me to home cook, right? So if I'm working in the restaurant and then all the time I'm eating some small cucumber and then probably I will get fired. Right? So eat, eat a lot of by, you know, vegetables while you are cooking. Yeah. You are the number one. Yeah. One, one more question before we start. You mentioned in Flushing that you have a restaurant, it's Korean. Do you recommend any specific restaurant? Hamjiba. Yeah, Where? there is a Hamjiba, uh, the Murray Hill. Murray Hill, uh, the train station. Yeah, right the, across there's Mapo. Yeah, Mapo, Supul Galbi, mm -hmm. the charcoal barbecue is also good. Okay. But they don't have many customers for some reason, I don't know right. why, but good. But uh, uh, the Hamji Bag is a side dish, it's so tasty. Right. And owner is always standing there, be ready to all serve. So I like that kind of his attitude, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What are you going to be preparing for us? Oh, yeah. Today, I'm going to show you how to make green onion pancake with seafood. So very popular. Everybody loves this one. This is half a cup flour, all-purpose flour. If you cannot eat flour, you can use rice flour. Rice flour, just a half cup. With this amount, you can make 12. Yeah, a lot. And then salt, one teaspoon, one egg. And then I, I need some water, half a cup. And mix, we make the batter. And then the five green onion. And then we need something for color. This is optional, but I like to add some kind of red, red color. This is a red pepper. Thank you. And then this is a seafood, shrimp and squid. Two ounce, <laughs> two ounce. <laughs> Shrimp is just shelled and deveined. And then all chop it up small pieces. 
if I have more time, I like to sh show you how to handle this whole uh, the squid. Take it how to take it out the guts, you know. So you you can see that in my video, you know. So. So mix this. This oil, yeah, cooking oil. Just scoop it. Whenever I taste the delicious food, or my food, you know, some I some the developed recipe turn out so delicious, and my heart is beating. Oh my God! I need to share this with my reader, you know. So because of so many touching stories, I I all the time I get email. They said, you know, one one lady says her hus she's living with a Korean husband, and then uh, ever since she started cooking with my recipe. Husband is loves more than before, <laughs> and then husband said that this is the this, that's it. This is the, my mom used to make this. So, Mangchi, you saved my life. You know something like that. So, who is going to want? Who is want? Who wants this special? I think the yeah. He, let's give him one. <laughs> thank you so much. It was just, it was really great. Yeah. And um, thank you all for coming. Remember that yeah. Mata Joffrey will be here next week.